back to Sirius XM. KRS One. I made it. Yeah, yeah. KRS One. Yes, sir. It's in the building. The teacher is here. The I man, made. brand new album. Now hear this. Yeah, tell me about that. <laughs> um, what is this? Hey, let me start here. Well, I had an album release party yesterday. Okay. Yeah. SOBs. What is there to say? 20th album. How many albums have I discussed with you already? It's like... 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. What is there to say? I mean, other than the fact that, you know, I'm dealing with salient issues. Uh -huh. uh, boom bap music. You know, we all say we want the boom bap drums and hard beats. But not too many MCs are really, uh, not too many rappers, I should say, are really doing the style. They're not really putting that forward. They say, yeah, we want 90s music, but then you listen to the album and it's not 90s music. Right. In this instance, we're going straight, like, I, I don't even want to say 90s. It's just boom bap hip hop that happened to be uh, popular in the 90s. Right. right. Uh, you know, but it's just some raw, straight, street craziness. And when I say street, not... You know, most people think street is always crime or this kind of thing. No, no, we're talking about Ferguson. We're talking about the American flag. We're talking about issues like that, street issues, real issues. Right. And, you know, and the album just exemplifies that. I, I'm really proud of it. Actually, as I speak to you, I'm trying to go through some of the songs in my head. And, um... All right, where well, you want to start? <coughs> you want to start with not hear this? Yeah. The intro. <laughs> well, that's the that's just you the, the intro. real drugs. Yeah. Drugs one. Drugs one. Tell me, we've been playing that, so tell me about that. Bum, 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 bum. Right, we well, uh, it speaks for itself. You know, there was a war uh, declared on drugs. Yeah, we're in the Reagan era, <laughs> way back. Yeah, and mm -hmm. drugs uh, one. And drugs won. <laughs> uh, the people that lost are not ever going to say uh, they lost. Uh, it has to be declared uh, by by the victors. And, and and when I say drugs won. Meaning that the, the ridiculous war on drugs is now obvious across the nation, around the world. They just let out 6,000 uh, nonviolent drug offenders from out of prison, out of federal prison. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, just, uh, what, a month, a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's ridiculous now. Even the law enforcement, DEA, everybody know the, the, the drug laws have to be fixed, but no one wants to fix them. Mm -hmm. People like Seattle, Colorado, so on, California, they just rogue states. They're just going out and saying, yo, he's going to pass the law because it's ridiculous. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've, I mentioned that in the song that, you know, um, New York is still locking people up for, for weed, right. for marijuana. Still locking people up. Yeah. While California have dispensaries on every corner. Yeah, especially up in the Bay. Up in the Bay, <laughs> up everywhere. I mean, and it's just like, bam, it's just right there. So this is an issue that points to the fact that the United States, that, that title, United States of America, is a fraud. Right. Because there's no United States. The states are not united. The states do whatever the state wants. States is all bad, rogue. Right? Say every state is rogue. Obama said, look, uh -huh. I'm going to bring in uh, these Syrians, uh, uh, 10,000 or 65,000 Syrians, whatever it is. The states say no. Right. We, we, we don't want it. You know, other mm -hmm. states say, okay, you can do it, but it's like, where, where is the United States? The United States. Doesn't yeah. exist. It doesn't exist. The title's a fraud. But I, I say this, that, you know, real America is its people, not necessarily the title itself. And one day American people are going to wake up and realize that you are American. Like, you, you are the country. There is no system. There is no... You know, there's there's nothing. These are all fictitious uh, constructs. You right. are the actual country itself. The way you act is the way the country act. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when people wake up and realize that, then of course we'll wake up to a better day. Until that time, yeah, I'll keep spitting the raw. There you go. Yeah. Now tell keep me what happened. Tell me what happened in Pittsburgh. Well, in Pittsburgh, uh, some dude jumped on stage. I'm always battling somebody somewhere. <laughs> but uh, some dude jumped on stage and was uh, dressed like LL. And um, he jumped up. He had my album in his hand. He had Criminal Mind in his hand. <clears throat> he had um, Down By Law, MC Shan. And he had LL Cool J. Um, I, I can't even see what it was. Was um, it Big Endeavor Radio? Radio. Okay. It's, it's the, the one with the radio. Yeah. Um, uh, radio. Um, and so... He jumps on stage dressed like LL. Can go have a, D, uh, a, a white Adidas jumpsuit, everything, LL. But he had Puma sneakers on. Okay. <laughs> he jumps on stage. Okay. 
and he, he, he wants to battle. So I stopped the show, let's go. He says, Shan's rhymes um, uh, beat you down, beat you down, beat you, beat. So the crowd's looking at him like, what the hell are you doing? Like, what? These are Shan's rhymes. Like, you up here bugging with right. Shan's rhymes. He got his phone, he's filming it. <laughs> like, this oh one, so it's up. Right. So I'm there, we there with Roz Cos is there, Domingo, we all there. Mm -hmm. So Roz, Roz is another itchy finger MC. Yeah, like right. he's looking he like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> so just just for the sake of the party, I thought I said I thought he was gonna really battle and get up and say something, but he didn't. So I just said a few words. And every it looked like every four bars I would say, crowd would start screaming, ah, ah. So I'm just letting him have it. And as I'm freestyling, <laughs> He was holding up LL's record dressed like LL, and I said something about his Kango hat and the fact that LL is whack. Oh. 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 You and LL been friends for a long time. Years. And that went viral. That went viral. <laughs> so have y'all talked? No. Okay. No, no, no. There's nothing to talk about. I, I'm not even... <laughs> I'm not even attempting uh, to, to edge that on. Okay. Uh, no, that was a, a total slip. Uh, freestyling. Um, when you're in, when you're in, in the, the moment, moment. Yeah, yeah. Right. it's just on like that. Guns out and uh, it, it was what it was. But no, um, LL is <laughs> a legend. And, right. and of course, I would never even think about anything like that. It was a battle with this other dude that was dressed like LL saying Shan's rhymes and in my attempt to battle him. Are you sure he wasn't trying to be Shan? He, in a way, he was, but he... he LL's look, Shan's rhymes. He was holding <laughs> LL's album with the Kango, but you know what? See, now, now, now you're going to open up and see. see, see now, now you're going to open up and see. Here we go now. Because there was a record called Beat Biter. Right. By MC Shan. Yes, sir. Who accused LL I was taking his whole style. Yes, so I, I don't know. When you say, was dude trying to be LL? Well, they're the same style. Right. Okay. Mm. All right. Now, I have another question for you that I wanted to ask you because did you see that Billboard put out their top 10 MCs of all time? Oh, what's that? Were you aware of that? Not at all. Yes. Billboard put out their top 10 MCs of all time. Are they alive? This, who billboard? The, are the MCs alive? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh. No, not all. Uh, not all, but oh. not all. Biggie, Jay Z, no. Eminem, mm -hmm. Rakim, mm -hmm. Nas, mm -hmm. Andre Three Thousand, Lauren Hill, mm -hmm. Ghostface Killer, Kendrick Lamar, and Lil Wayne. Nice. There's no KRS One on this list. Cause I wrote the list. <laughs> <laughs> that shouldn't be on any list. No. No. They did that right. You don't think so? No. I'm above all that. You don't want to be on any list. Nah. You can't rape me. Oh, no. I'm not, I'm not a slave. Classic answer. I'm not a slave, no. Nah. <laughs> you rate slaves. You put slaves on list. Right. And sell them. Not me. So you don't, you, you're cool with not ever being on any list? Well, of course not. I'm never. I, I, I mean, look. Okay, wait, wait. Let me back up. If someone, like, you know, real hip-hop enthusiasts right. say, yo, top five, what is it? Oh, you put a list together real quick. Right. Billboard? They have no credibility. That's exactly what I said. They're not saying, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not saying who yeah. the fuck is Billboard to the ever... Fuck? Who is that? Right, to yeah. ever who? decide to put a list together. Billboard? Ah, come on, man. They just ruined all them rappers' careers. That's right. what Why do you just think did. so? Because if you whack and you associate somebody... Whack, I mean, come on. Billboard? Right. I mean, Billboard haven't put out a real article in like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm just saying keep it real. Like, that's not... That's not anything, but I tell you this, go back over the list, though. Um, right. Some of them kids on there should be on that list if if, if we say just a, just a top 10. Like Eminem, I'm glad he's being looked at. Right. Jay-Z, I think he's underrated. Right. Who else on there? Biggie. Nah. Rakim. Nah. He, nah, nah. Rakim should not be on the list with Jay-Z and, and Eminem. Rakim's on a different list. Right. That, that, Do you think when people sit out and, and finally say, okay, this is how I feel about it. We're going to do with the list of the yeah. top MCs. Do you think they should do it by era? Yes. I always felt they yes. should do it by era. Yes. Yeah. yes. Oh, absolutely. You can't say Melly Mel and the whole Sugar Hill. 
you know, that was its own list. Right. You know, you you put Cool Mo D, Melly Mel, Ryan Master Cash. Kaz, uh, and others. Right. On that list. Sha Rock, so on. Right. Then you got KRS, right. Rock Him, LL Cool J, LL. No, no. Uh, LL is Houdini, Fat Boys, um, Run DMC, Beastie Boys. Right. Um, we weren't even out when they was. That's true. When they was rocking, we was like, wow, Run DMC. Remember, it was Run DMC and everyone else. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it was like Run DMC. That's hip hop, and then all the scroungy dudes down here. Right. Oh, man. And I that, asked Run about that one time. No doubt. Yeah, we were doing a commercial together, and, and I asked him because I peeped out uh, uh, Kings wears crowns and teachers stay hey, intelligent, hey. talking slick stuff on hey. the mic. It's so irrelevant, man. especially when you're not man. college material. Man. That was a direct shot at Run DMC. Damn. Absolute shot, wasn't it? Damn. I got to admit, yeah. Yeah, it was. And I, <laughs> and I asked Run. But not a shot. I asked Run why he never answered you. You know what he said? What he said? He said because at the time, Karis, well, he, this is exactly what he said. <laughs> we were doing stadiums. Word. Karis One was doing clubs. Word. Stuff. Why would I answer him, then put the light on him, and then people start paying attention to him when me, D, and J is doing stadiums? Then he paused and said, plus dude was nice as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> like, imagine every week. You had to be the best. Warden dudes. Are, like, see, dudes don't even remember today, like, when DMC was like, um, MCs have the goal to pray and pray for, for my, my downfall. downfall. Right. But I'm still, was that not a shot back? Yes, it was. Well, these were, these were, our little dinky dink rhymes was <laughs> nothing compared to one sentence that Run DMC would say. Run DMC would say one sentence. And that would just shock the whole nation. And all of us would have to go back and rewrite <laughs> albums. We'd have to rewrite. Yo, when they came out with, here we go. Here we go live at the Fun House. Yeah. We just play these records today. Like, we just they're so out of context. But, like, these dudes were fighting for their credibility, too. Right. So every week, and Jay, JMJ, Kyle, come on, man. That's 50 Cent. That's Onyx. Right. Afros. That's that's Jay. That's just one member of, of Run DMC. One member. Right. That's crazy. That's crazy. <clears throat> that's the did, run you, did you know <clears throat> that... I did a backstory with Big Daddy Kane mm -hmm. here on Sirius XM, and Big Daddy Kane told me a story. I was asking him about the battle that never happened between him and Rakim, mm -hmm. and he said uh, Rakim was not a battle rapper. He said the battle that he really wanted to have was with you. Mm-hmm. Because he was like, he knew that you would bring the best out of him, that he would have to take some get punched in the face and take an <laughs> uppercut and all of this to come yes, back yes, and indeed. battle with you. Yes, but he also told us that Fly Ty came to him when you were destroying the Juice Crew, you and Scott LaRock and the BDP Posse, yes, and asked indeed. him to jump in and finish it. Right. And he said he didn't do it because Shan used to refer to him at that time as mm. that nigga. <laughs> and Shan had no respect for him. Wow. And he said, y'all were cool as a motherfucker. No doubt. Did you and Miss Melody help Big Daddy Kane move out of his apartment? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Something, something happened with his mover. His move, something he got fronted on. Uh -huh. And we lived around the corner <clears throat> from each, each other. At, at the time, I was, um, uh, what was I living? Clarendon and Avenue D uh -huh. in Brooklyn. Right. And Kane was like Lennox Avenue or Linden Boulevard or something up the block. Uh -huh. And so, and we was just out. Like, we was just like, I mean, we had, uh, Criminal Mind that was out and Long Live the Kane was all, all already out. But <clears throat> Kane had made his name battling dudes in Brooklyn on right. Flatbush. And that's how I heard about Kane. Because, you know, I, I I made my name in the Bronx. Right. But I lived in Brooklyn. Okay. Just on some other hip hop trivia. Right. Okay. <laughs> so it's just, so I, I'm, I'm there in Brooklyn and I get the call. Yo, there was no cell phone then, you know. Right. This is rotary phone call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yo, what up? Yo, Chris, yo, I'm around the corner, dudes, fronted what? I was like, yo, I'll be there in a minute. We came around. He had a truck, everything out there. Loaded down the couch, a couple of equipment, chairs, table, done in like an hour. Right. It was dope. 
He it said, y'all went back to the crib, yep. broke open the six-pack, and watched the color purple. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> that was the end of it. Dude, it. But being friends, do you think that that put something on the reason why he was like, nah, Chris is my man, I can't jump into that? Well, no, I think it had more to do with Shan. Um, what, what, what you said about um, Shan, uh, or what Kane felt about the, the way, way Shan, Shan was, was treating, was, was treating him. I think it had more to do with that because... At the time, we were all hungry, mm -hmm. so I would joke my man for that for, for that hundred grand. Right, you know, it was out of respect. You know what it's like, like 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 sports figures, uh, sports sports players. When we on the field, I'm trying to do you right now. Right, off the field, winner or loser, we going to get that six pack, and we and I, you know, that's my man. He's on the opposite team. We just destroyed his whole crew. But he comes over to the victory game. All anyone else, whoever wins the Super Bowl, the loser, they be in the they be in the in the Super Bowl party for the other group as well. Right. It's only when you get on the court, like yo, I gotta win this game. Now Kane is a MC MC. Mm -hmm. Okay, he's hungry. If he really wanted it. He would have just jumped me right there. He would have said, yo, let me just jump this dude right now and take KRS real quick. Just, right. Uh, uh, and it would have been all love because I, I would have responded and it would have been on. Right. And, and that that would have been it. But I think it did have more. It, it wasn't about MCs because we all knew. I was cool with Shan. Really? I was cool with Shan. You know what I'm saying? Me and Shan... I mean, all the, the countless tours. I mean, we, we've done together, you know, to this day. <clears throat> to this day, get me choked up <laughs> when I talk about Shan. <laughs> but, but, but real talk, though, look, KRS would not exist if it wasn't for MC Shan. I say that everywhere I go, and I mean that. MC Shan gave me my break. Right. You know, and from day one, uh, he never felt um, dissed or slighted by South Bronx. Marley did. Marley felt like, yo, I'm going to get the gat and who these dudes. Right. That's Marley. <laughs> I was waving the flag. Get them Bronx get motherfuckers. Them, get them. <laughs> Queens keep them faking it? You and 50. Oh, my God, and, I was so hurt. I get and, uh, and run. Yeah, and well. until I met him, I didn't like the fucking record. Fuck that fucking record. Take that record off. Queens keep faking it? <laughs> I'm battling oh, several MCs at once. <laughs> Can't call everybody. Yeah, everybody. Do, so know. the borough so got the whole borough got it. Swing it, swing it. The whole know. fucking borough gets thrown out. I was mad at running in for that answer. I'm like, you gonna let this motherfucker this our whole borough? Nobody saying shit. Well, I was like. <laughs> The dude is nice. <laughs> Carol, yes, he did. Yeah, that was crazy. Twenty albums, bro. Yes. What were you? What, let's go from Criminal Minded. Okay. Why? Why? I mean, out of anything you could have named that album coming out, Boogie Down Productions. A lot of people might have heard a couple of singles from you. Don't really know who you guys are as a group. What did that title mean to you? And how did y'all come up with that title, Criminal Minded? Well, the quick answer to what did the title mean to me was that I was hungry. Mm. Quick answer. Right. Hunger. Right. That's it. Didn't eat the day I named the album. Didn't eat wow. that day. The day I named the album, I didn't even eat that day. Wow. My situation was dire. <laughs> okay, dire. Right. That's why when I when you get into battles with dudes that like that, you're never gonna win. You're never gonna win if you eating every day and you chill it is mm, nah, nah you're never gonna win. I will bite you literally. I'm hungry for real. Stab and eat you on the table. You know, this is what it was. So for the quick answer, hunger. Right. Hunger was the whole album, that whole criminal we had to survive. If that album di didn't get made, I would be dead as well. Okay. So that was it. That was it. This is it. Everything on the line. This is it. We going out. This is it. Kamikaze. That's what it was. That's the short answer. Here's a longer answer. So Scott LaRock named the album. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't technically name the album. Scott LaRock named the album because he was looking at me <clears throat> and he was always fascinated by my lyrics. Just a little background for those listening. Scott LaRock was my social worker mm -hmm. at, the, at the shelter. I was homeless in a shelter, 166th Street, Boston Road. 700 dudes in there. Crazy. 
Just okay. Dice was one of those dudes. Just Dice was one of these dudes in there as well. So we was going to the bathroom, beating on the bathroom wall, making beats on the bathroom wall, getting it in. If you was whacking that bathroom, dude, your head could be in the toilet. <laughs> so you had to really know what you was doing. Beat came on the wall, dude was in there hunchback like, yo. In walks the social worker, Scott LaRock, or his name was Scott Sterling. He walks in listening to the crunch. Boom, boom, bah, bah, we on the wall. So he's like, yo. After a couple of sessions, he was like, yo, I'm a DJ. I'm DJ Scott LaRock. Everybody was like, what? This is the social worker. This is the corniest dude in the building. <laughs> <laughs> this is the social worker. Like, yo. Oh, man. He goes, yo, I'm DJ Scott LaRock. Yo, come down to Broadway RT. That's where I DJ at. He was like, what? We home. We have zero. Okay. No, beyond that. We don't even have the word nothing. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're done. Okay. Right. He's like, come on down to the club. I'll put you on the guest list. Drink tickets. We ran down to the club. Got there. Everybody's iced out. Big bamboo earrings. Girl's hair is crazy. Everybody, the uh, what is it? Sheepskins, yeah. leather goose bombers. Sherlin's we <laughs> broke his, we're bums, okay? We're walking in. But we the nicest dudes in the building. That day, got into something with somebody right there at Broadway RT. Dudes having a cipher. And dudes is out there talking. And what they're saying is, well, he's like, they're biting like Run DMC and Houdini. Like, right. They're like, you know, I'm on top of the world and I'll land on you from the planet Mars. Right. I'm gonna. And it was like, we was listening. We was like, wow, that's how these dudes sound like that. And it was like, you know, then so, like I said, um, some dude turned to me and was like, yo, and this bummy dude right here. Oh, man. And I was like, what? Chewed that dude right there. <laughs> food on the table, food on it. We just, rah, just went all into this dude, just like, yo. It got so bad that we was talking about, yo, we looking at the earrings now. We like, yo, dude, right. you better start walking, dude. <laughs> yo, it's, 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 a robbery has been ready yo, to take place. You, know, you, you should keep me, yo. Right there, Scott LaRock fell in love with the lyrics. It was like, nobody's rhyming like this. He said, this is criminal-minded. And because everything I was saying, I was, we were the first to talk about the drug game. We were the first to pull the nine millimeter out. Right. We were the first to put the reggae in it. Yeah, da, 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 my da, da, God. Dang. We was doing all of this. This did not exist in hip hop. It, it didn't exist. So Scott was like, yo, <laughs> these homeless dudes, like, yo, we got to do something with them. And so Just Dice made it out the shelter first. Mm -hmm. He managed to get a deal with Sleeping Bag Records and put out Lottie Dottie. And when that came on the radio, we was like, yo, and Just was gone. That was right. it. He was gone. That, that was it. Then he did his album with Mantronics. We were still in the shelter. Like, yo, looking at Just. He was sleeping right next to us right here. Dude made one record, boom, he was out. Wow. So you can imagine. Latoya, right? Latoya. Latoya. La, 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 Latoya. Right. Wind it mm -hmm. up. Keep it up, yeah. Latoya. Yeah. Like, yo, Just Dice. And just so you know, big up my man Justice. Um, he, when, when he made it, we all made it. We all felt like we made it when he made it. And that's what the hood was about. It wasn't like today where, where you say, I got to make it, F him. Right. It was like if one of us made it, we all made it. And we felt that pride, even though we were still sitting where we were sitting. <laughs> it was like, yeah, we all made it. Just got out. Yo, this is what it was. And so Scott took us over to said G house. I'm paraphrasing now. Because I really knew said G before Scott. But the way Criminal Minded came together, pertaining to your question, how did who named it? Well, it was Scott that was describing us. And when I wrote the album, every day they would come with a beat and I would just murder that. Let's, yo, let's get this in. They came with like mad tracks. It wasn't even, didn't even make criminal minded. Really? Yeah, like like my philosophy was for criminal minded. What? what? It, it never made it. Um, Stop the violence. One, two, three was for criminal minded. Wow. Never made it. The, the lyrics, the still number one, I battled Melly Mel with those lyrics. And in 87, and it made it to By All Means Necessary crazy. in 88. Was that in, uh, <coughs> wasn't a fun house. 
Oh, Latin Quarters. I was there. Latin Quarters. I was there. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, Latin Quarters. Latin Quarters. You Mellie murdered Mel. Melly Mel. Oh, hey. It was ugly. <laughs> I never loved got... Melly Mel, but it was I ugly. Mel is my teacher. I, I love it. That, that, he's the greatest of all time. So that, those lyrics were supposed to be on Criminal Minded. Those were all supposed to be on Criminal Minded, but it just, it did. First of all, I, I was doing the conscious stuff first, and Scott said, nah. What you're saying in the bathroom of the shelter is what we want to put out. That's what we want to do. So I put all the conscious stuff to the side and said, well, let's get these guns out. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, yo, let's go. So we went and Scott was the one to say, yo, that's criminal minded. So I would take what he said, like look at the back and forth on this, and I would turn it into rhymes. I, I would like, he used to call himself the super ho. Right. So I turned it into Skylar Rock had him all. He is a super ho. That's from him. You know, I just wrote it out. Right. You know, like that. And so, you know, so, yeah. That's hungry. That's... KRS One is here, man. Sad Lover Show, y'all. Backspin, Serious XM. 20 albums later, baby.